Uh, if you were in Austin, I apologize, you have to look at this again. Uh, but uh, if you were not in Austin, uh, I again apologize. Uh, and uh, anyway, I'll do, I'll do one profile. There you go. OK, that's enough of that. Uh, um, OK, I think I can switch to this mic now. Uh, Welcome to the Embedded Linux Conference Closing Game. Uh, if you have never come to one of these, uh, welcome. <laughs> this is what it's like. Uh, I apologize in advance for any strangeness that happens. Uh, I got to make sure I have my glasses here so I can see stuff. Um, so this is the special Penguin edition uh, of, of the Embedded Linux Conference Closing Game. Um, so earlier this year, uh, my wife and I had a chance to go to Antarctica, and uh, I was actually able to take a selfie with some penguins in Antarctica. Super, super cool. I just want everyone to know, I take my role as brand ambassador very seriously. Okay? So, and I have, I have pictures to prove it, and I'm standing here like this. Um, so I want to thank everyone that made this event possible. Uh, a big thank you to our sponsors. Uh, we had some, some great, uh, uh, great people who, who fund the event. We couldn't be in this type of nice venue uh, without, uh, without these, this sponsorship. I know it was expensive. Darn that Garth Brooks. <laughs> but uh, but uh, I'm glad you could all make it and that you made the effort to come out here. I also want to thank our program committee, um, and uh, you can read the names here. Uh, they do a great job of selecting the content uh, and filtering through the proposals. And I apologize if your proposal was not accepted. We get so many great ones every year, uh, we can't accept them all. A big thank you to the speakers. Really, this event is about the speakers and the material that they deliver, sharing their best practices or things that they've learned. So a big thank you to them. And then you as attendees, obviously, uh, the event would not exist uh, unless we had people to come to it and also share uh, your knowledge. And then a big round of applause for the Linux Foundation event staff. They, they, they have had, the, the last two years, you think you've had it hard. Oh my gosh. Uh, it was just been, uh, just a miracle that they were able to pull off all the stuff they did, given the conditions. Uh, and uh, there's a lot of contract renegotiations. We finally made it back to Dublin. This is our third time trying to get here in, in three years. Uh, so big round of applause to them. They're really the best in the business. OK, just a little bit of housekeeping uh, before we go on. So speakers, if you have not done so already, you're supposed to have done so. But please submit your uh, PDF version of your slides. You can do that on the sketch.org site. Um, or uh, you can email them to the Linux Foundation. Uh, please don't make us try to contact you after the fa uh, fact. It gets hard to, to contact people. Um, the sessions were recorded, and they will be put on YouTube. I think you can actually access, uh, for attendees that are registered, uh, you can access the sessions immediately. Uh, they're still on the um, virtual platform. And so you have access to those. I think in about a month or so, they'll be put on the Embedded Linux Wiki or the links to them. And then you can go out and hopefully this material uh, can serve as a reference in some cases for many years to come. Um, so uh, this is the presentations page. I just looked at it uh, like an hour ago. It's not quite there. I had to put a stub. <laughs> uh, but we'll put the links there when they're available. And you can, if you go to eLinux Wiki, it's uh, pretty clear how to navigate and get to them. Um, future events. OK, so I said in my BOF, if you came to the ecosystem BOF, said that there might be some changes. OK, the short answer for next year is we have no idea what's going on. That's, <laughs> that's, not, that's not exactly true. Uh, we had a meeting this morning with several uh, people involved uh, in various events. I uh, met with Angela, and um, so we're, the longer answer is that we're probably, and this is all probably, nothing set in stone yet, but we're probably switching to an annual event that will alternate between North America and Europe. Um, 
And we will not be co-located with Open Source Summit Europe. It'll be kind of a standalone event. So it'll be more focused on just embedded topics. Um, hopefully that makes it easier. Uh, when you are in the hallways, you can see people uh, that are doing the same thing, types of things you are. Um, so we have a working title. Don't quote me on any of this stuff because this is all preliminary. Uh, the Embedded Open Source Summit. Um, and then we're looking at other events that are, of course, related. Uh, I didn't mention IoT, but Zephyr, Yocto Project, ALC are, are three candidates for, for that Embedded Open Source Summit. Um, and we're, we're shooting for April, May of every year. I got some feedback that June, July is not great. Uh, but next year in 2023, uh, the venues are all, all booked up for April, May. So we'll, we'll have it in the summer. We'll try to avoid uh, holiday season in Europe uh, in subsequent years. Uh, but for next year, we'll probably be, um, probably be in June or July. Uh, that's kind of what we're looking at. Again, none of this is set in stone, but uh, just for future planning. Um, so now, what we, what we come here for? We came to play some games. Uh, and we are going to play some games of skill, so-called, and luck. And uh, if you have not played this before, you should have two cards on, on your chair. And we're, the first part of this game is a trivia game. We're going to ask you to uh, answer some questions. and. Uh, the way it works is we have everybody stand up at the, at the beginning, and then when you, uh, if you answer correctly, you'll, you, well, as we go through the questions, you'll hold up either red or green, or sometimes both cards. Uh, if you answer correctly, you get to stay standing. If you, if you don't answer correctly, uh, please sit down. We do have some judges here to make sure people are honest. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, and then we have a bunch of, uh, and then after we go through a couple of rounds, we've narrowed it down to like four or five people. Uh, we will give you a piece of paper. Okay, we used to have people come up, but it kind of takes too long. So uh, we'll give you a piece of paper uh, held up there, and we will. And um, then at the end, after we've done with all the games, we'll come up and you can. We'll show you the prizes, or you get to select the prize that corresponds to your number. Okay. So oh, I already. Okay, this is a. Um, what's at stake? Okay, so we got a couple of things. Really, really cool. We have some BeagleBone AI boards. These were donated by Texas Instruments. Totally cool. If you want to do an AI project, uh, BeagleBone AI, we will cut right through the supply chain issues and send one to you. So, <laughs> so that's awesome if you want to play around with that. Uh, we have some Zephyr boards uh, over on the table. Uh, we have uh, lots of gift cards. Uh, we have books. Oh, I want to hold up a book. So this is, all right, I'm taking my traveling mic. This is embedded, uh, Mastering Embedded Linux Programming by Chris Simmons. Is Chris Simmons here? Chris, stand up. OK, one of our very own. So oh, that's awesome. Yeah, if, if you're nice to me, well, I'll, I'll twist Chris's arm and get him to sign it for you. So, and then we have Souvenirs of Ireland. The event staff has gone out and gotten some stuff. There's like. Uh, you can hold up a couple of things. Anyway, there, there's some little packets of souvenirs you can take home and, and enjoy. Woo! <laughs> okay. So our, our first game is Embedded Linux History, Technical, Nerd, and Penguin Trivia. So we've added Penguin to the list this year. Because as, as Linux developers, of course, you should know your Penguin stuff. Um, okay. Oh, yeah, the important disclaimer. <laughs> Important disclaimer, this game is not fair. I don't want to hear any whining. Uh, no, we're going to whine. Oh, yeah. You're going to, you'll get eliminated. Uh, it's just too bad. <laughs> um, and sorry, virtual attendees. I know that there are some virtual attendees, but we don't have any prizes for virtual attendees. Uh, we found that the latency of the, we, we used to have, try to do this server based, but it was really, really hard to play. Uh, made it difficult. So you can play along at home, and if you want to brag that you would have won a prize, then feel free. Um, so uh, with that, I think, question one, everybody up. And you can be considering this. Uh, the currently released version of the Linux kernel is 6.0 RC6 or 5.19.9. So hold up either a green card or a red card. OK. And the answer, of course, is 5.19.9. Uh, 
because a release candidate is a candidate. It's not actually released. Um, and, by the way, we're on, we're on RC5 uh, this week, not RC6. So that's just wrong in two, two ways. Okay, so sorry for those of you who got eliminated quick. Okay, which of these penguin species does not have a Linux distribution named after it? Does not. Okay, everybody, well, I won't, I'm not going to give any hints, but like so, one of these is obvious. <laughs> okay, which one does not have a Linux distribution? Okay. What's the green one? I cannot read it. Oh, it's a, a deli. Yay. Green and red is a deli. So Gentoo, macaroni, or a deli? And the answer is, you'll be happy with this. They are all Linux distributions. <laughs> no one got eliminated, see? Now I've made everyone happy, time for the, time for the opposite. <laughs> okay, uh, what is the original meaning of Dublin in Old Irish Gaelic? I don't know if I pronounced that right. Is it Hurdled Ford or Blackpool? Okay, and you should, I should say one, two, three, go, because I know you guys look around to see who's answering. <laughs> so if you have, if you, if you had a friend from Dublin, <laughs> this is not whining, this is, it's Blackpool. Dublin means Blackpool. Um, so there is another name for the town, and I won't try to pronounce it. Oh, okay. Wait, 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 wait. okay. Can we, uh, is this on? Okay, can you pronounce it for us? Dahlia Aha Clear. Okay. <laughs> what, yay! What, what he said. And that means, that means town of the hurdled ford. No idea what that means in English. Uh, okay, question four. The current owner of ARM is <laughs> SoftBank or NVIDIA? Okay. Oh, come on. Didn't I fool anyone with that question? Okay, it's SoftBank. The NVIDIA deal, NVIDIA made an acquisition bid, but it fell through earlier this year. Um, so I don't know what ARM employees think of that, whether they're happy or sad, but it's... What? Well, I don't know. I, it's, okay. Okay, this one might be harder. Uh, scientists have very recently created a robotic implant for mouse embryos that allows their DNA to be changed before birth, or a rechargeable, remote-controllable cyborg cockroach. Okay, I'm not doing very good here. It's the cockroach. <laughs> so if you are green, sit down. I, the quote from the article is so precious. These achievements will help make the use of cyborg insects a practical reality. <laughs> so thank you, thank you scientists for that. We really are going to enjoy our cyborg. It's, it's okay, it's got a solar panel on its back. <laughs> Okay, and it can recharge in the field, apparently. Okay, that's, <laughs> so that's, thanks a lot. Okay, Linus decided to change the major version number of the next Linux kernel to six because preempt RT has finally been mainlined. Oh my gosh, what a major feature. Or Linus doesn't like to count very high. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna run out of questions. Okay. Um, <laughs> It's Linus doesn't like to count very high. It was in the keynote if you attended that. Wow, okay. Sorry, sorry for people who got eliminated. This is the highest we've ever got. Okay. Which of these movies has the closest projected release date? Dune, part two, Avatar two, or Edge of Tomorrow two? So there's, there's gonna be sequel mania in the next little while. So which one is it? Okay, this, this might eliminate some, yeah, this is definitely gonna eliminate some people. The answer is Avatar 2, Way of the Water. So, and I just, I know it's on my little script thing there, but I just gotta point out, projected release. I thought that was pretty good. Uh, <laughs> um, okay, Dublin's, okay, how are we doing? Oh, we still got a lot of people to get rid of. Okay, no offense. <laughs> Dublin's O'Connell Bridge is unique because it is the only bridge in Europe with the same width and length, 
or it has been identified as the earliest site of a bridge built by Vikings. One of those is true. Okay. The answer is, it's the only bridge. I think we, who's left? Who's left? Oh, you guys are winners. All right. Woo! Okay, go give them a tag. Oh. So how many, is that five? Did we end up with five people there? <laughs> so that was fun, wasn't it? <laughs> uh, okay, let's, let's keep going. Everybody stand back up. This is a very athletic game. Okay, Intel recently shipped its first RISC-V processor. Ooh, true or false? First RISC-V processor from Intel. You know, Intel normally makes Intel chips. <laughs> IP or hardware? Uh, the game is not fair. <laughs> I, just, I just want to point out the game is not fair. It's false. <laughs> so uh, they have produced a dev kit for RISC-V that includes an FPGA. And uh, actually, I visited the booth this week and... Um, uh, I said, is that an Altera FPGA? And he said, well, no, I, but it has Altera written on it. Uh, <laughs> um, let's see. Question 10. AGL has switched from QT to Flutter as the main GUI platform. OK. Is that true or false? This is going to this is going to kill me because I'm only I, Walt Miner sent me in the answer to this. I asked him in private email, and I'm not sure I interpreted his answer correctly. <laughs> but it's false. Okay, you can do you can do some experimental apps right now, but it's not the main the main GUI platform. Oh, how are we doing? One, two. Oh, too many. Sorry, we gotta we gotta go one more. Uh, okay, scientists have recently de uh, developed a computer that performs calculations when it is. Squeezed or exposed to the air? <laughs> okay. The answer is squeezed. <laughs> okay, those come along right when I need them. Uh, how are we doing? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, that's oh, 11. I'm sorry, I got to do one more. Okay, but this is an easy one. <laughs> Ireland's first computer, the BTM 1201, was purchased and installed by Green, the Irish Sugar Company, or Red Trinity College. Why not Guinness? <laughs> and the answer is the Irish Sugar Company. Uh, I'm sorry, I gotta quote my pithy statement here too. It was a sweet deal. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, good. Okay, so that's, uh, you guys are winners. Hooray! <laughs> okay. Some, somewhere in my bag is my key to when these questions run out. <laughs> okay, we will do one more round of this. Uh, so everybody up. Okay, that computer we were just talking about. Was it purchased in 1957 or 1960? <laughs> yeah, half are going. <laughs> okay, it was purchased in 1957. Here's the interesting thing though, it took them three years to program it. So, and, and interestingly, uh, the first scientific programming in Ireland was done by Christine Willies in 1958. Turns out they gave it to the scientists first before they gave it to payroll. Uh, so that was, that was pretty cool. Okay. okay, this is a tricky one. Who wrote the book Mastering Embedded Linux Programming? Was it Linus Torvalds, Chris Simmons, or I did? Okay, Chris, Chris, you got to hold up both. 
<laughs> no, no, no. No, Chris, you're the only one in the audience that can answer this correctly. <laughs> okay, we're gonna count it, even though he's only holding up red. Okay, uh, if you said Linus Torvald, sit down. If you said Chris Simmons, you're right, stay standing. If you held up green and red, like Chris did, <laughs> we have a special award from you. Come on up, Chris. And I apologize, you're gonna have to stand there while we do this. Okay, so we have a tradition. Uh, join me on stage. Okay. Uh, we have a tradition of giving an award for outstanding contribution to the Embedded Linux Conference. And uh, Chris has been doing this for over 11 years. Uh, I think your first one was Cambridge. 2010. 2010, uh, and we just because we're goofy, we don't do a 10-year one. We do an 11-year one. We we meant to give this to you last year, but you know COVID, and so it should have an asterisk on it, because I think you're actually at 12 years. But here is a lovely trophy for you. Oh my gosh! Yeah. <laughs> so oh, so just a little bit, a little bit about Chris. Oh, we've got a, a photographer, so. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, Chris has spoken at ELC Europe almost every single one. I think you only missed one year. Uh, well, according to, well, we'll talk. Uh, <laughs> but he was our keynote speaker in 2013 in Scotland. And he's an author, trainer, educator, author of a book. So uh, one of the outstanding members of our community and a great contributor. So thank you very much. <laughs> Okay, question 15, right back into it. A research at Meta has been experimenting with an AI that can green, determine words that a subject hears based on their brain waves, or red, determine what a subject is thinking based on their eye movements. Is it brain waves or eye movements? Meta wants to read your mind. Uh, and the answer is green. Ah. Uh, so they're actually, the, you might think this is just a privacy invading thing, but they're actually, this is the first step in a process. They hope to be able to extend it so that they can allow handicapped people uh, to communicate. Uh, so. uh, at first, yeah, good point. Uh, okay, Ireland is home to green, the greenest location in the world, or red, the most scenic airport in the world. Which of those is true of Ireland? It is subjective, highly subjective, completely unfair. It's the most scenic airport in the world. I can't believe, how many did people did we eliminate with that one? One, two, three. Okay, okay, prizes for them. Okay, yeah, go ahead and give prizes. So we have uh, two on this side and one here. If you had, okay, it, do us a favor. If you already have a piece of paper, politely decline your second or third one. <laughs> so we can spread, spread the joy around. It turns out, so Killarney National Park is uh, recognized as one of the top 10, uh, but it lost to Costa Rica as the greenest. Um, but, uh, but this Donegal Airport apparently is super, super interesting and beautiful to fly into, so. You should go there. Um, okay, uh, here's, I have one that's later on, but there's, there's, a, there's a danger, I'll run out of questions and I'll, there'll be too many of you left. Should I just keep going? Yeah. Uh, okay, well, okay, everybody back up. <clears throat> if you can't take advice how to run for the game from your attendees, who can you? Uh, easily, Intel recently acquired which embedded Linux consulting company? Was it Witekio, Linutronics, or Bootlin? Okay, I hope, I hope Thomas has a poker face over there. Uh, it's Linutronics. Um, so uh, hopefully that means that we'll see a lot of interesting continuation of real-time mainlining and that kind of type of stuff. Okay, uh, now we get a little bit more esoteric. Embedded Linux Conference Europe has not been held in which of the following countries? Okay, not been held in Spain, Norway, or Austria. Okay. 
I see. I'm going to definitely run out of questions here. Uh, so it's Norway. If you were green, sorry, sit down. Um, and and in, a, in a weird twist of fate, Embedded Linux Conference Europe has also been held in the state of Washington in the US. <laughs> so that, that's due to COVID. That's one of those asterisk things. Yeah. Uh, um, OK, who was offered a red pill or a blue pill as a choice between reality or illusion? Yes. Was it Thomas Anderson in The Matrix or Dave Aim, David Ames in Vanilla Sky? Me at breakfast. <laughs> OK. It was The Matrix. Uh, Morpheus offered him. Oh. I do it. That is not, it's not fair. Green, yeah. OK, so. I never said my PowerPoint, it's, the actual answer is green, not red, sorry. Okay. And, and I misspelled Thomas Anderson, so I don't know. I like, and, okay, how many species of penguin are there? Is it 19 or 41? I'll just, I'll just give you a big hint. If you ask Alexa, it tells you the wrong answer. It's 19. OK, so I think we're at 15, so we need to get, OK. Sorry, we got to keep going. OK, the first exascale computer was added to the list of top 500 supercomputers in May. Was it Fugaku at the Riken Center for Computational Science, or was it Frontier at Oak Ridge National Lab? What was the first exascale computer added to the top 500 list? It was Frontier. So if you're red, stay standing. OK, how are we doing? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight. Oh, no, nine. Oh, sorry, guys. I got to go one more. <laughs> Which species has more biomass by weight on the planet Earth? This is a, this is a question of great interest to penguins. Uh, <laughs> is it green cows or red krill? Which has more biomass? Oh, well, that's unfortunate because it's cows. <laughs> I, think, I think we went all the way to zero. Oh, I don't know what to do here. This has never happened before. Oh, is this the second time? <clears throat> OK, this one's just, I think, the next one. Which, OK, this one, we're, that game is over. Uh, we're going to move on. But I got to do this question because it took me so much work to figure this out. <laughs> OK, so Linux is installed on the Ingenuity helicopter, which is deployed on Mars. OK, now I will give you some background information that I don't normally give. Because uh, it's running low on battery due to Mars solar winter, it has to shut off at night. <laughs> so is it currently, right this minute, running? Embedded Linux, you can answer. You just stay seated, but you can answer. Is it true or false? Is it running or not running? <laughs> this was so hard to figure out, guys. <laughs> it is true. It's running. Well, it should be. So it, like Mars day is 39 minutes uh, longer or shorter or something like that. Anyway, I had to do all this math to figure out, like, what time is it going to be in Ireland? What time is it going to be on Mars? Uh, but it should be, by my calculations, it's about 6.30 PM on Mars, 1830 on Mars right now. What? Where, where the, no, where the perseverance, where the helicopter is. That was the other thing. It can't be Mars UTC, which, which by the way, there is a Mars UTC. So anyway, OK. Uh, that's good. Uh, so let's move on to the second phase of our game. Um, okay. Uh, we're going to just skip past these like we don't know what they are. Oh, there's a lot of good ones there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Before, before these. I know. You could, oh, that's a good point. I'll never be able to use this deck again. Dang. <laughs> okay. Uh, time for game two. So that was the skill one. I, the, only the skilled people won that one, I'm sure. Um, so we're going to play rock, paper, scissors. 
Uh, so you don't need your cards anymore. This is with your hand. Uh, except we're, this is against the presenter, so I have something recorded in my presentation, and you're playing against me. Except we're actually paying, playing rock, paper, scissors, penguin, krill. Okay, so it's super easy. Just, just learn that, figure that out. So, you know, you have to be creative. Like, how, do, how does krill beat scissors? It kind of jams them. I don't know. Anyway, um, so it's, this, is, this is the text form of that diagram. Um, these are the hand signs, okay, important. Okay, so you got your traditional rock, paper, scissors, and then penguin is this, and then krill is this. Okay, so there's lots of krill, they're little tiny ones in the ocean. Okay, um, so everybody up. Okay, I'm gonna say ready, set, throw, and that means to do your hand sign, so pick your hand sign, don't make it ambiguous. Okay, and then I, yeah, and then we'll see if we can whittle it down. This game goes very fast. Uh, so, okay, presenter is, oh. Okay, there you go. There's my flub for the day. Okay, I'm not going to do that one, so because you all saw it. So, we'll, we'll go to the next one. Okay, so I'll say, ready, set, go. Okay, presenter is Penguin. Yes. You get to stay in the game if your scissors are rock. Scissors and rocks, very dangerous for pigeon. Penguin. Okay, okay, ready, set, go. Okay, presenter is Krill. If you're a penguin, you like to eat krill and paper smothers, smothers krill, it's very tragic. Okay. Okay, those who are still standing, ready, set, go. Presenter was rock. If you are paper or krill, you get to stand. Oh, wow. Wow, that was, uh, you guys are good guessers. Is that, we didn't eliminate very many. Usually it's three-fifths. <laughs> okay, ready, set, go. And it's penguin. Stay in if you're rock or scissors. How are we doing? One, two. Six. All right, we have winners. Woo! Okay, so I have to excuse me for one moment while I confer with my judges. Okay, judges, come here. <laughs> Okay, I'd like you guys to customize your answers so we get the right number of attendees at the end. <laughs> but I'm not going to tell you what that number is. <laughs> okay, everybody back up. Okay, ready, set, throw. Okay, presenter is scissors. You can stay in the game if you're, pay, uh, if you're krill or rock. It's hard to cut krill with scissors. <laughs> okay, ready, set, throw. Okay. Uh, presenter is rock. So if you're paper or krill, you get to stay in the game. Wait, how are we doing? Yep, too, a little too many. Okay. Ready, set, go. Okay. Presenter is paper. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Oh, this might have worked. One, two, three. Oh, I'm so sorry, guys. We got to do one more. <laughs> okay. And, uh, okay. Ready, set, go. And scissors. So if you're rock or. Okay, we have winners. Okay. 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 We have just enough for one more round. We'll do one more round, then we'll, then we'll wrap it up. Um, so everybody back up. We'll do this fast. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, ready, set, go. Okay, presenter is rock. Stay in the game if you're paper or krill. 
Okay. Okay. Uh, let's see. Ready, set, throw. Presenter is Penguin. Stay in the game if you're scissors or rock. Ready, set, throw. Okay. I know you guys are trying to read my Python script. <laughs> I generate, I have a random generator thing that runs the, uh, Is this run <laughs> yeah. Oh, what's the XKCD? Uh, pick a random number, four. <laughs> That's, it's, I picked it just now and it's random. Okay, uh, we gotta go one more time. Okay, ready, set, throw. Okay, it's penguin. Wait, 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 okay, wait, wait, wait. Oh, one. Is that, does that work? How many, how many we have left? I have four. You have four? Two? Oh, perfect. All right. Okay. Okay. I'm going to I'm gonna do the same thing. Don't look at these. <laughs> I, I don't even remember how many rounds I did. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, time for some closing thoughts. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about my trip to Antarctica. Uh, I had a very interesting time there. Uh, and, uh, and then just a little bit about uh, my small contribution on that trip. So uh, I went on a cruise ship down there. Uh, this had been a trip that my wife and I had been planning for a long time. Uh, we, went, um, we actually got to get off the cruise ship and go on Zodiacs and land on the continent, take pictures of the penguins. One of the activities was really interesting. It was called the science boat. And uh, in that activity, uh, they took a small number of passengers and we went out, went out into this bay and took measurements, uh, basically to help understand what's going on with the ecology. Uh, my particular job was, uh, let me see if I have, yeah, my particular job was I lowered this device over the side of the boat and I took temperature measurements and salinity measurements and then they correlated those to the temperature. and. Um, so, okay, admittedly, this is a very, very small contribution to the overall, uh, you know, science effort worldwide, but it was a contribution. I thought it was really interesting. The thing I thought was interesting was um, they had structured it so that uh, this contribution, so there were some PhD students in Brazil and in uh, Chile, uh, and I think the U.S. That were, that were using this data as part of their PhD thesis, and they were, you know, writing... In particular, what they were trying to do, one of the other things we did was measure, actually uh, sampled the phytoplankton uh, and the zooplankton in the, in the bay and tried to correlate those to see what the salinity and the temperature, how that was affecting those populations and how that affected stuff up the food chain. A small thing, uh, but I thought it was just ingenious that they found a way to have tourists, um, my wife and I, uh, actually help contribute. And we had a great time doing it. Um, and it was, it was just, it, it reminded me a lot of open source that uh, we should seek out ways to allow everyone to make any kind of contribution, no matter how small. Um, and there are opportunities all around us to do that. Um, I would say, so last year, uh, a developer came up to me and uh, talked to me about his website called meaningfulcode.org. So this is a place where you can go and you can look up projects, and they're categorized by what language they're in uh, and what kind of sector they're in, whether it's health or social services or all kinds of different things. So I am going to give you homework. <laughs> so uh, go out and find a project co to contribute to. It doesn't have to be through this. I've got, I talked in the ecosystem boff about elinux.org. It needs some help. We, we could, uh, it'd be good if we could get an effort together uh, I just created this page, seriously, like two hours ago, stuff to do on the eLinux website. So uh, if you want to help out, uh, I'm planning on uh, having like a Zoom call sometime in October uh, to kind of revitalize the eLinux uh, website. So there's some really good information out there, videos, uh, presentations from all prior embedded Linux conferences. Uh, there's been some really neat work to categorize those. So if you're interested in USB, you can see USB presentations going back uh, 10 years, 20 years. Uh, well, not 20, <laughs> getting ahead of myself. Uh, but uh, my advice is just go out 
and find something to do in open source. I know that we contribute uh, to open source uh, and, and that makes the world a better place, but there's uh, so many opportunities that we really don't have any excuse uh, not to go out and, and do some good in the world. So the future is bright. Uh, I was talking to Jim Zemlin uh, just this morning and uh, you know, we used to tell people, well, you know, the, the Linux motto used to be, you know, world domination. Uh, we don't anymore because uh, we kind of already did it. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of rude, uh, but, uh, but there's, there's, there's a lot more work to be done. And hopefully uh, with your experiences here, uh, you've gained some uh, information, learned about some tools or some activities or projects that will help you in uh, whatever you're pursuing with uh, Embedded Linux. So thank you for joining us and uh, hope that you learned something new. I hope to see you all again sometime in 2023. So thanks very much.